And what we're going to do is prune the roots up on these root stocks so that they'll go into the pots a little easier. So we're going to prune these roots up. And all you're going to do is cut them back. That's what we want them to look like. So you're not taking it all the way off? No, we're not taking them all off. That much. Yep. We just, just leave it more or less like that. And anything, anything higher than your finger, anything that grows up on your finger, you want to cut right off. Can you say that again, Greg? Anything longer than your finger? Is well, no, anything above above where the, the top root. that like that. Yeah. Where the, you'll see the roots are pretty, pretty much the same. So any root that grows above that, you want to cut, cut completely off. And that's what you want to be left with. Why are we doing this? Well, a couple of reasons. One, they'll fit into the pots more readily. It doesn't set them back. Some nurserymen will cut the root completely off this and let it root again. Um, there's different thought in this. Isn't that better to have one than to wear big pots? No, so, no. Well, there's a lot of, a lot of different. Some nurserymen believe that if you cut all the root off, it generates a faster growing, stronger root. Some say, no, leave a little root uh, so the plant isn't in total shock when it goes in the ground. So what we do is kind of cut the middle, right down the middle. We don't remove all of it, so we remove some of it. So what is it you're unwrapping now? These are the varieties. These are our budwood. These are our budding rubbers. <laughs> <laughs> So we're looking for a little bit of room between pods on our rootstock. We're going to make a cut, make some, like so, make that down there. Right above that is where our second bud is going to go. So that's what your that's what your rootstock is going to look like. And all we're going to do is match up. Move the label. Match up a pod, two pods that are going to go right in there. And how deep was the cut into the bark? Not very deep. The, the deepest part is this little, what we call a foot at the bottom. Okay. Which actually holds the, the chip bud in place until the rubber holds on to it. Look for the, the best spot where you've got enough room to put two buds. You know, you couldn't put two buds in there because this would be in the way. You could put two of up there. You know, if you twist it around, you'll find a spot. But if you go on the back side, is that all right? Yeah, anywhere. This isn't in the way. No, any, anywhere along the edge where you're going to put those buds is fine. You're not going to put a bud over the top of that. Because that will grow. You're going to eventually cut it off. Okay, so let's, let's go with, that's an all right spot. Okay. And again, you're going to cut your little leg at a little bit of an angle. See how I'm mm -hmm. kind of angling it like I was going to slice it in half. Mm -hmm. and pull it back a little. And the deeper you go, the wider that cut is. So mm -hmm. if you have some really wide buds, you would go a little deeper. And it doesn't make any difference to the process. No, nope. it nope. doesn't make any difference. It really is just determined by the size of your bud wood. The best way to do it is instead of just bringing it down, you want to actually cut across it. That's why you have to watch your thumb. So you're going to start a it like so. Pull that knife back towards you. You can do it slowly until you get below the bud. You do this on a bench so that if it falls out. Okay, you take the bud, put your knife down so you don't cut yourself. Stick it into that little foot. I'll take a look at what you've got. Now we're gonna. What we're going to do is trim a little bit off the bottom because we made it a little longer than what we want. We want this to match up as best we can with what we've cut. Here's where I talk about some of these varieties fall down a little bit. We just trim the edges before we cut it off. Right, if you cut through that, you know, this piece or any of this down here, it's not going to be violent. Sure. You don't want to, you don't want a really thick piece. You want to, you can see how thin that is. Now this is where you can trim, remember I told you the sides? If you're still not happy with it, you can always trim the side up a little bit. You, know, you might catch a little bit of the side of the bucket. Okay, so we're going to take a budding rubber, 
When you shingle a house, obviously, you don't start at the top, you start at the bottom. Okay. You ready? Yeah. And you're going to stretch it a little bit. The important thing with the bunny rubber is it's got to be tight. It's got to be as tight as you can get it because we want to compress those two and have them seal right together. So you're going to put it right at the base, tuck the back around, hold it with your finger, okay? And now this is where you really want to get them tight. Sometimes they'll want to sneak out of there. Pull it as tight as you can and wrap it around and hold it. Some guys will actually turn the rootstock. They'll turn it like this, which you can do because you can keep an even pressure on it that way. It's hard on my fingers. Right. It's hard on my fingers to do it that way, but some guys like it. You keep going. You can have a gap between the two buds that's not covered, mm -hmm. but everywhere there's a bud, you want to make sure that budding rubber is covering it up. It wants to push that out of the way sometimes. Keep it in place. And again, you really want that as tight as you can pull it. Make sure it stays in place all the way up, completely cover. Okay, and you get to the top, stick your finger in around it like that and just tuck it underneath it. And again, keep the pressure on it, keep it tight and pull that tight. And there's your finished product. Your, your two buds are there, but we're gonna make a mark. This is where our paint is gonna come into. And you can make this mark anywhere you want. All I do is make a little chip in it like that and we'll lay it aside and when we're all done with this this variety we've made 10 of these trees then we'll we'll hit it with the white paint okay but for that for now that's one tree now what you're going to do with this after you plant it in the ground mm -hmm. you remember i talked to you about cutting the budding rubber 20 days after they begin to right. grow you're going to go on the back side of the opposite side of the paint and just cut it right off right. you're then going to allow it to grow. cut off the rubber Cut off the rubber on the and back with, side. With the bedding knife or the... The best thing to use is a razor blade. blade, a razor blade. Straight razor blade. If you can find a straight razor blade, they work the best. You, you know, be careful you're not gouging the back of the root side. Yeah. Just all it takes is a little tiny nick. Sometimes I said, remember, you can pull the top away if you can get your finger in there to start it. Yeah. But if you cut it along the back, you're okay. The buds are then going to... Once that budding rubber is gone, they'll be, they'll be cemented in place, more or less, if you will. You're going to want to let it grow and... And one or both of these will begin to sprout. You make it, maybe this one won't grow for whatever reason, didn't take, and this one did, or vice versa. You're only going to keep one. Okay. So once you've seen them start to put growth on, you're going to come through and you're going to cut it right off, right above the, right above the bud, either that one or this one, whichever one you like or whichever one grew. And that way, whatever grows above that is your tree. And if, if both of them grow, but this is the more vigorous one, how, how do I cut that bud off? You're going to go in. They'll, they'll come off pretty easily. Just pull it off. They'll just snap right off. Okay? Yeah, if you want to use the top one, that's, that's the way to do it. But make sure you get that cut as close as you can to that bud. Is it flat or the name? Right? I always angle it, but you can, it doesn't matter. As long as it's fairly close, because the tree is then going to begin to grow, and everything below that is obviously your root stuff. When you plant it in its permanent location, you want to make sure... The problem with MO7s is that it, they like to grow root suckers. So these roots will go down to the ground, they'll come back up, and they'll actually grow around the base of the tree, and they're vectors for all kinds of disease. So you want to make sure you cut them all off. That would give me more root stuff, wouldn't it? Uh, well, you're not in the business of root stuff growing. <laughs> because, yeah, it will. It'll, especially fire blight will transmit through mm -hmm. uh, roots very easily. So you want to make sure you cut that back. Plus it's competition for the tree. Right. There's one tree. So you can tell how long this is going to take it.